Hello, this is Edward Awad, and welcome to this lesson on the structure of biological membranes. Biological membranes, whether they surround cells or organelles, all have the same generalized structure, which consists of three major components. And these are, first, lipids, then proteins, and carbohydrates. Here are several cells taken from the inner lining of cheek cells, of human cheek cells. Let's take a closer look at these components in a zoom in on the plasma membrane. First, the lipid portion of a biological membrane is made out of a phospholipid bilayer in which other molecules such as proteins and other lipids can be embedded. Cholesterol and other steroids can also be found in the lipid portion of a biological membrane. The phospholipid bilayer is a physical barrier that is selectively permeable to molecules found on both sides of the membrane. The second portion of a membrane are the proteins which are embedded in or attached to the lipid bilayer and serve a variety of functions depending on their types. Some of these functions include transport of molecules and particles across the membrane. Some are enzymes, while others serve as adhesion and recognition proteins needed in the formation and maintenance of tissues. The third component of biological membranes are the carbohydrates. These are usually found attached to lipid or protein molecules, mainly on the outer surface of the membrane. One of their major functions is associated with providing a specific identity to cells. The most acceptable structural model of biological membranes is known as the fluid mosaic model. As you can see in this video, the cell is constantly changing shape. This is due to the fluidity and flexibility of its membrane. Let's zoom in on its membrane. According to the fluid mosaic model, the phospholipid bilayer combines with a variety of proteins and other lipids in a fluid mosaic arrangement. You can think of the phospholipid bilayer as the fluid part of the model, similar to a sea of lipids in which proteins move about or float like icebergs on the surface of the water. To see a cool animation of the fluid mosaic model, click on the link here. When you're done viewing, continue watching this video. Cell membranes are selectively permeable. Some solutes cross the membrane freely. Some cross with assistance, while others do not cross at all. Several factors affect membrane permeability and by extension, its fluidity. The most important of these factors are, first, temperature, Second, the types of membrane lipids found in the membrane. And third, the amount of cholesterol in animal cells or other lipids for plant cells in the membrane. Let's first look at the effect of temperature as a factor affecting the fluidity and permeability of membranes. As temperature increases, we would logically predict an increase in membrane permeability and fluidity due to increased kinetic energy of the lipid molecules in the membrane. The second factor that affect membrane permeability and fluidity is the type of phospholipids in the membrane, mainly referring here to the hydrocarbon chains in the phospholipids. A high proportion of saturated phospholipids in a membrane would decrease the permeability and fluidity. This is due to the fact that saturated hydrocarbon chains are linear by nature and therefore can be arranged in a very tight configuration, as you can see here in the picture. This is the reason why, for example, butter, which consists of mostly highly saturated fats, is solid at room temperature. By contrast, 
a membrane with mostly unsaturated tails in phospholipids would be more fluid and more permeable due to the kinks in the tails caused by the double covalent bonds formed between carbon atoms. These kinks cause the membrane to be less compact and therefore more fluid and permeable. It is for this reason that oils remain fluid at room temperature since they consist of high proportions of unsaturated fats. The third factor we're discussing here is the amount of cholesterol or other steroids in membranes. The higher the proportion of cholesterol in membranes, the lower the permeability and the fluidity of these membranes. This is caused by the fact that cholesterol molecules interact with phospholipid tails mostly through hydrophobic forces. They fill spaces between these tails and therefore restrict their movements. It's as if cholesterol molecules make the phospholipid bilayer less porous and more rigid. In animal cells, cell groups or tissues are formed by two processes, cell recognition and cell adhesion. Let's take the example of cells found lining our small intestines. These cells are cuboidal in shape and on one side they form extensions that look like fingers. These cells recognize each other through cell recognition processes where one cell specifically binds to another cell of the same type. The relationship between these two cells is somehow cemented, and that's the adhesion part, through the interaction of specialized membrane proteins located on the surface of these cells. The type of cell-to-cell -cell junctions that cement cells together can be of three main types in animal cells. Looking again at these intestinal cells, we recognize first type junctions as the first type. Tight junctions seal adjacent cells together in such a manner that they limit the passage of molecules and ions through the space between these cells. Tight junctions also block the migration of embedded membrane proteins within the membrane. The second type are desmosomes, which are localized patches that hold two cells tightly together. They are common in the skin where they are needed to maintain the structural integrity of skin tissues. The third type are gap junctions. Gap, gap junctions are intercellular channels that permit the free passage between cells of ions and small molecules. Because ions can flow through cells that are connected to each other by gap junctions, Gap junctions permit direct cell-to-cell -cell chemical communication. Gap junctions are commonly found in cardiac muscle cells, for example, where they allow fast spread of signals needed for these cardiac muscle cells to contract in unison.